Thank you all for having me. So how did the city arrive at this decision to rename the breakfast this morning? Um, when we lost him last year, we actually said that we were going to do it, and we took the official step then, and of course Memorial Day came back around, and we just wanted it to be special. It, it, it's one of those things that sometimes when you, you hear on the news, it's always someone you don't know. It's never the kid who went to high school with you, or, or the person who played on your parks, or who worked at the Walmart, who has family, a wife, kids, right here in this community. It's never that person. But, but this, this is, he was that guy. He is that guy for us. And so it was, it was truly our honor to, to give the, the statue, the trophy to his wife and his family, but just to honor his memory, mm -hmm. you know, that type of sacrifice. He, he was one of our own. We should all be so proud yeah. of him. And he, he paid the ultimate sacrifice. You think that his story dispels some stereotypes that people might have in mind. What do you mean by that? I, I just think it's worth noting. You know, whenever people talk about patriotism, we've gotten to this thing in this country where we think patriotism has a demographic. It's old or it has a race. It, it, it's, it's not that. It, it's, it's people like Sergeant David T. Johnson who sign up for voluntary military and, and they put their life, on, they sign up understanding that at some point they might actually have to give their life in service to their country and their fellow citizens. That, that's what patriotism looks like. It, it's, not, it's not Midwestern or, or, or Western or Northeastern. It's not Southern. It's not born here or just naturalized. It's all of us loving who we are, what America is as an idea, what America is as an ideal, and being willing to sacrifice for it in, in very, very grave ways when it comes to Sergeant David T. Johnson. And when you talk about patriotism and race and identity and American ideals, uh, a lot of people think of the NFL protests and whether that's some people say it's not patriotic, some people say it is patriotic to take a knee during the national anthem. How do you think this all plays into our ideas of patriotism? Well, I, I don't know, but I just think it's interesting because America as, as a civic experiment was actually created by, by critics by people who say, hey, these things aren't right. We don't have a right to free speech. We don't have a right to free press. We don't have a right to bear arms. We don't have a right to assemble. We don't have a right to practice our religion. They actually had these concerns. They petitioned their government. Their government ignored them. And, and they created what would be the most enduring symbol of freedom in, in the history of the world, America. So when I hear people criticizing people who criticize as non-patriotic, I think it's always very, very, very interesting because the forefathers of this country were British citizens. And, and, and they said, this is not right. And they tried to perfect, perfect their union in Great Britain. They couldn't do it, so they made their own thing. We're trying to perfect our union all the time. And so America is not perfect, but what's great about us is that we can actually move towards that perfection, and we, we've seen that. America is that. a result of a protest. Absolutely. <laughs> it was a great protest, 1776. Let me ask you, and also, by the way, Hard Rock Stadium is in your city, so yes, I think it is. you have every, every uh, right to comment on this. But I want to get back to Sergeant uh, LaDavid Johnson, because you've been in contact with his uh, widow yes. and the three children. How are they holding up? Uh, what's going on in her life? Well, I think it's probably hard for them because, especially now when, when, when we're, everyone's talking about it, but today when, when we were there, um, after the ceremony, when everybody was talking to her and she composed herself, and she got a chance to talk about the man that she loved and how he was a great husband and a great father and a great friend. And just to be on stage and to play with you know, his, his daughter and his son, both, uh, well, first of all, his daughter has more personality than <laughs> anyone in the entire world. She is the most adorable young girl. And, and his son, who just, lo I think he's gonna be a newscaster, because you didn't see it, but he grabbed the <laughs> microphone, and I turned the microphone off. He turned the microphone back on. And so while she's being interviewed, he's down there, and he's just talking into the microphone. You can see, you can see children and a family you know, find their way to move through pain uh, to something more. Are there any other plans for the city to memorialize Sergeant Johnson? Well, we're going to do this every year. Th this, isn't, this isn't something that was named for him and it happens this year. This is something that exists in his name in perpetuity. His children can come back to it in 20 years. It's going to be the Sergeant LaDavid T. Johnson Memorial Day breakfast in Miami Gardens because a kid who rode his bike uh, to this Walmart and went to this high school, went across the water and gave his life in service to his country and his fellow citizens. And we ought to always remember that. Great to see the Miami Gardens. Let's hope the entire community embraces that concept. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Mayor Gilbert. Thank Absolutely. you for being here. Nice to see you.